Hello everyone, Attack Power here with Game 2 between Farid and Koenig Koenig here on Slutsk. Let's dive right in here. And on the left in the red we have Colonel Koenig playing 4th Canadian on Maverick Income. And on the right in the blue we have Farid Rommel playing 91st Luflande, also on Maverick Income. Very excited for this one. There's two divisions I definitely want to see in action. I don't, uh, let's dive into these. I don't rate fourth Canadian super highly. The division just doesn't feel better than like second or third Canadian. Um, even though you have this like mix of nice American units with it, I just don't feel like it's any better. I don't know. The infantry end up feeling worse. I will see. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Again, it's very possible. So the scout SAR, it's not, it's like basically just a regular infantry squad. Recce is a normal infantry squad, but it's got like a two inch mortar carrier or something with it. Staghound here in A, and then two cards of the Sherman SARs. I forget, I forget exactly what Scottish something rifles or something like that. And then another Sherman card there in B. The infantry tab, only 66 six infantry here. Uh, a card of assault pioneers in A, defense group. Not a big fan of defense groups that are coming in in a half track there. Uh, motorized rifles, rifles Piot, and another rifles Piot, all in A. B phase, one card of motor rifles and then two C phase cards, Kangaroo Rifles and Rifles Late. And this is what my issue with the division. Your best infantry are phase locked to Z phase. So then you have to pick between Kangaroo Rifles and Rifles Late. And like, they're already late anyway, so it's a bummer. Tank tab here, we have some Command Stewards. Steward 6, Firefly, Double Vet in A. Sherman Leader in B. Firefly, Double Vet in B. And then the M475 Sherman in C. So no regular Shermans here other than the Leader one on the B phase. Uh, support tab, just two Vickers and an M4105. I coming in C, yeah, you like don't get, yeah, you definitely don't get 2K earlier, otherwise he would definitely bring it. Uh, AT wise though, six pounders, two cards of 17s, and then an Achilles, and the B face cards is, is vetted of 17s. Not a big fan of that, personally. Uh, the Crusader AA, and then the Bofors in the AA tab, very light there, just five units. Then RD tab, two cards of Sexton with one of them vetted. Now that I really don't get. Vetting your RD just feels like it does so little. Uh, I'm probably wrong, but Koenig definitely builds decks very differently than me. He's kind of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, less is more. <laughs> He's definitely a less is more kind of guy. Uh, Air Force here, Typhoons, Typhoon Bomber, and the F6 Recon. On the other six, 91st, Luflanda. In terms of like flavor and the unit composition, this is actually one of my favorite divisions from the new DLC. Um, I, it's just got a lot of cool units. Do I actually think it's like super good? No, but I do enjoy the division. It's neat. Uh, Recon tab here, we have the Fulschmjäger Schafsuta and the Abwehr. Uh, Panther Shark unit. The infantry tab, full to the brim here. We have Leader, Sturm Pioneer, uh, Fulcher Mirror Pioneer, the LL Schutzen, which are these beautiful double MG34 units. They're small. They're like eight men, but they're only 25 points, which is a big deal. Uh, then you have Fulcher Mirror, FG42 and A. And then B phase, we have the uh, LL Schutzen with just a single LMG, the Fulschmjäger FG42 and Fulschmjäger ZF. And then C phase, you have the other car of the LL Schutzen with the double LMG and the Pioneers. Tank tab is limited. It's only You can only get it in B and C phase, and it's basically just Shugs. And now, basically just Shug divisions are fine, uh, but the limiting to B phase does kind of is annoying. I will say it's annoying. Um, the support tab here, Flammenwerfer, MG42, IG-18, Kubel Munitions, and B phase LG-42. It's a nice support tab overall. Uh, AT tab, it's expensive. The you have He has two cards of Panda Shreks here. The Garlic, which is very good. Pack 40, but you only get one card of Pack 40s, and then you have Pack 43s, uh, two cards, which he's bringing in A and C. Actually, it's funny. It's almost exactly how I've built this division, except... No, this is very similar. Uh, the AA tab, 40 mils, Black 36 and B with the 88s as well. I, I played less 88s, but he's on slit, so I understand. RD tab, really solid here. It's a very good RD tab, actually. You get radio mortars, the Neville for 300 mil, and he's bringing just two of those. He's not bringing any of the 152 big boys, and then an off-map. Yuck. Air tab, BF-109, fighter, BF-109, rockets, and JU-88 bomber. All right, let's dive into this thing. Uh, no, pretty conservative deployment here by Koenig. What's our aggressive player going for? Fair going for the central push. This is pretty common for this blue side. Blue side, I do think it's a little tougher to get flags on the blue side. Um, I don't. I think this map is relatively balanced. Not super fair. You know, terrain definitely favors like if you can get this hill, you can overlook the whole thing. But if you get this hill, you can overlook the whole thing. You know, so I. Uh, I think you have a good chance from both sides. Red side, this blue flag is, is like so obvious to go after. It kind of gives you a, a more like duh flag to go after, while blue has to be a little bit more creative in finding a place to push. Staghound, nice push here, stopping this entire push. That's huge. Because that was basically Farid's this was Farid's push right here. And now with the Staghound literally just stopping the entire thing. That's a pretty big deal. Definitely worth the 40 points or 30. Yeah, 30 points. It's easy to forget, Staghounds are, are zippy AF. 
Stack on gonna pick up another Sturm Pioneer? No, he does get out in time. Barrett on his micro at the moment. Still in a bad position right now, though. As Garelix tried to deploy. I would not say this is the Garelix best spot. Um, it's a very good gun. Only a thousand meter range, though. And it only does four damage. That's the big issues with it. Um, the, obviously, the penetration is excellent for a gun of this size and price. Uh, it comes with Raiders, so it's a super hidden. It's like the American guns, but way less oppressive because it's only a thousand meters. Um, but that, that four damage thing is quite annoying. All right, Sturm Pioneer overwhelmed easily by the half tracks. Fulsham Jaeger, the only thing defending here. Panzer Shrek, a little out of position. Although I'm not sure what would be a good position, honestly, for this. So Assault Pioneers came out of, started to come out of the woods here. Now the LL Schutzen are also here. This is the new unit in this division. Nine men. I thought it was eight. Apologies. Only 25 points, though, for a double LMG unit is really good value. Especially, a, like, a non-Bren double LMG unit. I should say MG34-esque. MG whatever German machine gun for 25 points is very strong. BF109 came in, took out something here. Not sure what it was. Currently 12-12 still. Remember, they are on Maverick Income. Two-inch mortar now, already doing the work. These things are so obnoxious if you can use them well. It's a 50 mil mortar, like all of them. Absolutely OP if you can micro the crap out of them. Absolute trash if you can't, though. It's always the, it's always the rub with them. Use them well, and you'll never lose a, a, like a close-range fight ever, an infantry fight ever. Use them poorly, and they literally are useless. Sturm Pioneer pushing in here. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting to a point where I feel like perhaps the MP40 should be buffed a tint. Nothing nuts. Like, just a small increase in, like, suppression or something. Because they're just so bad. And I historically, they were not this bad. Granted, they weren't the ultimate LM, uh, SMG, but they definitely weren't a bad SMG. It wasn't like the difference between an M1 Garand and a K98, which was massive because of the semi-automatic versus bolt action. Um, like, the MP40 was a reliable submachine gun, so it just feels like they are so bad in this game. Actually, a buff could be applied to, what, the Sten, the MP40, and uh, what's that other really bad LMG? Uh, I mean, uh, SMG, excuse me. Submachine gun. Uh, uh, it's another, like, British one or American one. Is it the Grease gun? No, I don't think the Grease gun is that bad. Definitely the Sten. I think the Sten and the MP40, maybe it's time to give them just a teeny bit of love. Nothing nuts, like I said. They should nef definitely not be firing, like, PP Shaw levels of damage or anything like that. I, I don't even think it's a damage increase. I think it's a slight increase in suppression. They're, like, one of the lowest suppressing SMGs in the game. Which affects, like, all the accuracy and everything. So as they fight, they don't apply. It's, it's similar to the Bren issue, right? It's, it's exactly the same as the Bren issue. Falsham Jaeger's not nearly as scary as they used to be. Oh, excuse me. Falsham Jaeger Pioneers. Uh, essentially, they're just a chunkier Pioneer squad anymore. So not anything crazy strong. But when you're fighting units out of cover, then, of course, they shine. Twinch Carrier going to take out that Garelic, it would appear. Oh, 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 Sherman. Just going to come in there and freaking throat punch that thing. LL shoots him doing quite well here for themselves. Bear doing a nice job getting forward on this hill. He really was kind of like squeezed off, and now it's, he's coming back with it. Problem is he's losing badly down here, losing a Falschmager now. The Garelic already dead. And he doesn't, I mean, it, unless it gets close enough for the Panzer Shrek, he does not have a way to kill this Sherman. Two-inch carriers, hoy. I know they're not unfair, but my god, when they're when you're against someone who knows how to use them well, they feel so busted, like enragingly busted. Double IG eighteen up on the hill to try to box out a little bit in the town. Man, I wish I was good with Commonwealth divisions. They seem so good whenever I watch good players use them, and then I use them, and they're just like so sad. Garelix are also very good because they rarely miss. Because they're at 60% accuracy at their max range. So that they, they don't miss very often, let's put it that way. And they're already generally really close because of their range. So Panzerstrike, is he moving? He is. Uh-oh. Uh, he's going to have a very bad time. Once this Panzerstrike is dead, he's going to be in a really bad spot. Now, he does have more Panzerstrikes. 
He does have two cards of Pander Trek, so this isn't like game over when all the Pander Treks die here. But definitely will now allow Koenig to... He doesn't know there's no more, but it's not often that people have two Pander Treks standing around. They're not actually, like, you don't generally have that many Panzer Shrek units. So, having more than one in a location is really odd. So, generally, when you kill a Panzer Shrek, within the next minute, you probably are free to get up close and personal, as long as you're not within, like, Panzer Faust range. Salt Pioneer doing the work here. Again, Falsham Pioneer's just not, they're just a Pioneer squad anymore. They're, they're not that exciting. Yeah, I guess they get an extra MP4, but we were just talking about how underwhelming MP4s are. IG-18 in position, but the second one is delayed for some reason. Shafshusa going off of return fire. Sturm Pioneer's pushing forward. As Farad makes his push in the center. Still 13-11, though, for Koenig. Trading quite well, truth be told. Now see double 20 mil coming in. Typhoon doesn't manage to finish off the Shafshusa, actually. Scout SAR, let's check out these new guys. Again, they're basically a motorized rifle, right? That's what it is, essentially. Piot, one LMG. Bren, you know, not that exciting. So Farad looks like he has finally given up on this hill here. Not terribly surprising to see that hill get flipped. It's pretty common. It's just a long way to get reinforcements over here. And the truth is, it's a long way to get a flag. Like, unless you go full commitment to capture this whole hill which is asking a lot because it's very easy for your opponent to get reinforcements in and it takes a long time for you to. It's a big ask. Problem for right now for Faraday can't go into this building because the, the flames from the assault from the Sturm Pioneers like disallow it. Now he finally gets in there too close to use their flamethrowers. So assault Pioneers do go down here. Typhoon just doing whatever he wants. 20 mil finally unloaded, but that's kind of a joke in this situation. Typhoon going to fly over them? He is. Oh, let's see here. Can the double flak one vet do the job? The answer is absolutely not. Typhoon is too fast and medium resilience. Might get some smoke. Let's see if they can at least pull out the smoke from the from this thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There they go. They got it. They got it. If these were triple vet, I would have, I would, it would have been a bet one way or another. It could, it would have been 50-50 them killing that plane. All right, Pioneer should get a grenade off. Nope. Couldn't too quick on the micro there. As Ferry decides to double down on his center push. Pack 40's line of sight blocked by his own smoke right now. Do you guys have smoke? No, they don't. Things quiet in the center as Ferret is forced to sit on the back side of the hill and Koenig is presenting just an indomitable wall of armor right there. These units through. You do not want to lose these Falschmeagers in the transport. That's pretty devastating. All right, it's through. Still 13 level. Koenig getting a pretty good lead here. BF-109 coming in for a rocket truck in the defense group. Close up Sexton here. Sexton's just really strong because you can just fire them for friggin' ever at the beginning of the game. It's so nice. They need absolutely no ammo. They're pretty accurate. They're 25 pounders. You know, they're not like game-breakingly great, but they're also pretty solid for their price. The fact that these move around too, generally hard to kill. They are open top, so do be aware. They do die. Uh, it is very realistic to get you know, bombs or already on them and kill them. Vickers just getting in these perfect spots over and over again. Now I see a Firefly, and that's going to be a bit of an issue. There's no 2K here to work with. But now we're in B phase, so Stugs can start coming. Here's a Pack 43, like, out into the open. Interesting. Now I will uh, Fourth Canadian is missing 2K HE before C phase. So for a lot of these programs, that basically means you don't have 2K HE because C phase is a long way off in a lot of these games. Now, Mirror Maverick, there's a good chance that we're getting to C phase. Here's the new 81 mm mortar with its nerf range, only 1,800 meters. That does not change the fact that it's accurate AF. That is not new. All right, so Vickers being cut off. LL shoots him pushing forward. Interesting. Fair trying to get into the woods here. If he can get into the woods, he's got a fighting chance of being in, staying in there. One thing that 4th fourth, uh, fourth Canadian really doesn't have much of is CQC again. Their CQC is basically relying on those little flamers at the beginning and hoping automatic rifle Brens can do the job, which, spoiler alert, they really usually don't. So all these infantry are getting pushed back. Not sure what stopped them. I'm really not sure. 
Hmm. One thing to remember, too, about slits, there's a lot of great recompositions. Church towers, you got two of them. There's usually only one. So you got a lot of church tower options, which means mo both these players are going to have a lot of information. Feels like it's a really long aim up time. Barrett does get this flag up here, 13 11. The Stuart wasn't here. I'd actually think maybe the double shoots in could win this one. But with the Stuart here adding just that little bit of extra, it's going to be a bit too much. Pack 40 might save the day, though. Hiya! Oh, the IG 18 can see that? Interesting. Stug coming in. Pack 43 now going up onto the hill. Definitely a better position. You can see all over the place. This pack 40 is way out there. Any typhoon or something will wreck this. These 20 mils will absolutely not stop it. Getting all over his micro right now. German Pioneer is just barely standing alive. Fair doing a nice job micro wise, but right now macro wise, his strategy is not panning out. IG 18 is doing a nice job supporting from the hill there. These 81 mm mortars now have the same range as a 65 mm mortar, and truthfully, I'd take the 65 mm any day. Faster firing really pins stuff down. Yeah, this thing can kill stuff, but mm, the loss of that range is, is, is pretty significant. Like, it cannot be understated. Ultimate ZF, these guys are monsters still with their double MG42 and sniper. Now, the sniper did get nerfed. All snipers across the board did get a fire rate uh, drop. And I think a little bit of aim time increase as well. So it takes longer for them to get on target to actually start firing. Back to a 12-12 here. So the Maverick Ingham pours in. Koenig's got a lot of stuff, though. I feel like Koenig's playing very defensively and just letting Farad throw units into the jaws of his defenses. Farad convinced this rifle's Piat is still here, but the building is destroyed, so it actually just can't be there anymore exactly. Oh, no, it looks like he did change targets. Not sure. The F-109 does get through the Crusader AA. Crusader AA is 20 mils, so while it's better than a single, like, the Crusader AA is better than two singular 20 mils because it gets on target faster and therefore puts more damage on target eventually, but it is still 20 mils. Stug found the Stuart. Easy kill for that. As the Fulgrimir GF just pushes through, this is again a Farad special of just Q move and then Q move even further than that. It's always really impressive when it works and it's always just kind of like not shocking when it doesn't. And it definitely works, is, works even less now because of the changes to fallback. Neville Orfer going after the Crusader AA. Will it get the kill? It does not look like it. No, a little too far. He, I don't know. I forget what the minimum range is. I think it's 2,000 meters. Probably could have got a little closer. Yeah, and these infantry just pushing in completely unsupported here. This The, the whole this change is nice to see, though. I feel like at, with the new update and the fallback nerfs and things like that, I think you actually need to be a lot more combined arm-centric than you were before. Before you really could get away, especially the last six months, uh, you could really get away with just spam 10 infantry at a problem, like especially elite like Falschmagers and things. Spam 10 infantry at them, and things will probably work out, um, is how it was ending up being. And now, with the changes, oh, ho, 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 that hurts. Um, you actually have to be a little bit more purposeful in your attacks. If you have one of nine goes down, Typhoons, of course, get out. One, only one smoking here. Uh, that pack 43 dying up there, that's 100 points. And that's the issue with having to rely on pack 43s. It's 100 points a pop. And while they are quite deadly, they very rarely pay off. At 100 points, you have to kill at least two medium tanks. And usually they're just specifically used for hunting heavy tanks so that they actually trade off for themselves.
because things really begin to stall here. The problem for Ferret is, yes, he's managed to get back a 12-12, but that's while holding this very far forward flag. While Koenig has very much secured this flag on the hill, like, like Ferret is not getting back on this hill. Like, that's the end of that. And we also have two Sextons already going. One's got an artillery leader next to it. Interesting. Not saying it's a bad play, I just we don't see a lot of people actually use the artillery commander for its intended purpose. Remember, they do give veteran seat to normal troops. 81 Mortar do a nice job clearing off one of the assault engineers. Seems weird that the Stug is not firing. Oh, because he's on a move order. I wonder why. It really needs these Vickers out of the way. There are two cards of them, but yeah, there's 12. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I saw the veteran scene. I was like, maybe there's not that many. No, there's a lot. There is still a lot. Vickers still alive. Assault Pioneer goes down. Smoke from his own mortar here? Kind of screws him out of killing that Vickers. Oops. 88 on the run. Sexons are basically going to, like... The thing is, the Sexons are basically block out all usage of big 88s and pack 43s because he just he can just arty anything that like sits there. It's a major issue for him, actually. One of 91st strength is that it does have a fair bit of 2K. Between the pack 43s, the flak 88s, the LG 42s, you can play very well at range. Sexons are a great and pretty cost-efficient counter to that, though. So Koenig looking to see what happens if he pokes out a bit down here. Is meeting the butt end of an MG42, but that's probably going to get already down would be my bet. That little shoots and just kind of chilling out in the open. Not 100% sure what he's doing. Mortar continues to pick out targets. Trying to take out these defensive He is whittling it down. It'd be false to say they're not doing anything. The mortar strikes from these mortars here. F6 now coming in. Should get forced off, especially with the 20 mil and Flak 36 combo here. Of course, they're not going to kill this. Typhoon does get a bombing strike off, but it falls short. The Fulgenier will survive this moment. Fulgenier ZF finally got rid of its fake AT uh, symbol there. Gets close enough. The half-track can't shoot it anyway, so there goes the flag and fared finally on a 1311. He obviously has a major advantage here in this fight. Once the Sherman gets involved, things will obviously flip very quickly. These half-tracks immediately proving to be an issue. The IG-18s could shuffle up to try to do some work there, but the Firefly is waiting. Off-map? Really? Elo shoots and unloaded. Why? Like, why here? Why at all? This is a very strange play. Like, if you're going to do this, then maybe here, I understand. Maybe even here, if you're really feeling cheeky. Stug 3 goes down to the Firefly here. But why on this hill, where you have absolutely no chance of getting there? Stug is coming all the way. Okay, again, really strange. Here, I makes sense. Somewhere covered from the hill, like right there, so you can stop your opponent from getting anywhere near this flag. Sexton's starting to multiply here, now going after the 20 mils. There's very little fire coverage here, so it's really up to the AA. And the problem is the 88s really are not good AA, so you're really relying on this flak 36 and 20 mils. So it looks like Nebelwerfer going for a strike here, and it's actually kind of far back, which means if these just straight fall back, he might still get the kill. Off-map comes down. Off-map is deadlier now. So to my chagrin, off-map is technically better than it used to be because... The fallback nerf means you can't just run away and survive. It now actually, like, the off-map will often kill stuff. Half-track does go down. Half-track cheese getting one uh, one surrender there. And yes, I'm going to call it half-track cheese forever. That is what it is. You are cheesing a half-track. So, Neville for strike so far. No hits. No good shots at all. Does take out the, the supply and then gets one sexton. Nice hit there at the end. So ends up being a good strike from the Nebelwerfer. Another off map, this time literally hitting nothing. So this was a waste. And again, I'm just not a fan of off maps. And I'm not even saying because I hate the way they play, because I do. But it's 160 points, and if you don't land in exactly the right spot and follow up with it immediately, it's an absolute waste of points.
Like it is. It's complete. That was all his C phase, like remaining C phase points. He used up on this stupid off map. That's two Stugs that actually could go trade with something and be efficient. Six pounder will be able to kill this Stug three. Just gotta get out of here. Get that Stug life living. Yeah, like what? What is this doing? Even if there are dudes here and they died, so what? You're not killing 160 points worth of stuff. There's no way. He's got no follow-up for it either. Ooh, Firefly getting a hit on the Stug there. We'll get... Probably kill it. Oh, it doesn't even get the shot off. Ooh. That hurts. Now, there is an 88, but the 88 already moved off the hill. Kind of weird, since it can box us out pretty well. Not sure what the goal over here is with this. But Ferret has done a good job of grabbing that ground there. The F-109 has no chance if Typhoons just strafe the flak down. Oh, that's so dirty. I think the 152 has one more strike left. Uh, nope, just kidding. Nope, he just bombed the hill one more time. And he's got nothing following it up. This Shug is like weirdly just chilling here. Typhoon's on the run. Very little AA down south. We do have a 36, flak 36 coming in. Rockets away. They do land on the half tracks, but the half tracks say, whatever, bro. Try that again. I'm not a big fan of the rocket BF 109s. They they build up suppression so fast that their rockets rarely kill what you need them to kill. As Farad pushes to finish clearing out this area here. He is on 1311, about to equal it out. But if we look at troops on board here, he's looking a little thin. He has traded better. And now half tracks run, run and gun here. IG-18 shifting so they don't get insta-dropped here. Not sure what these half tracks are going for after this point. Pack 40 is getting up on the hill. Should be able to stop things from going too terribly wrong. FG-42, Falsham Jaeger should... Eh, well, two-on-one's always a loss, basically. One-on-one, -on -one, they probably would win. Ah, cheeky grab there by Koenig. I didn't think it would go that far. Interesting. Kangaroo rifles and rifles late now in. Definitely odd choices for C phase. I really... Fourth Canadian is really not a, Ma a Maverick deck. Like, if we're being honest with ourselves, the strength of this division lies in C-Phase with your way better infantry, your armored support that you then get. Um, there's no question I don't think this is a Maverick deck at all. And that's not even my usual everything should be balanced argument. Ooh, Firefly getting a nice cheeky shot. Clears that off. Still going to try to finish off the other half track, which he should be able to do, and he does. Gets rid of that. Typhoon in. Oh, ba ba boom It's a big loadout on that thing. Must be two 250s, I would think. At least, maybe it's 500s. But then, probably be more expensive. Not more expensive, I'm sorry. The, the bomb symbol would probably be a triple bomb instead of a two. The issue is now, too, you have to deal with the kangaroo and the kangaroo rifles. So now you have this, like, armor-soft combo, which is just really difficult to deal with. Comes the Typhoon to get... Okay, this is the bomber. Four... Okay, so it's basically a 500 kilogram bomb. So just because it's not five and it's 454, <laughs> they categorize it as medium. I love it. Too funny. Neville Verford doing the work. Stug 3 goes down, though. Firefly finishing it off. If you do that, Neville Verfords are stronger than they were. And they already were strong. So they got a big buff with the fallback nerf because falling back doesn't save your units like it used to. So the, the rockets hitting still hurts like heck. Shoots in finally coming in, but like... What's he isn't? What's he hoping to do? Do you think the off map from like ten minutes ago made a difference? That much that it hasn't been corrected? No. Oh no! Falshmir coming a stupid way. Do get out in time. He does notice it. Ig18 just slightly out of position here. Ig18 heat shell off. Does actually land and kills the kangaroo. That's huge. Unfortunately, the kangaroo rifle's just in range, and the IG-18 goes down. As more motor rifles in the white trucks come in, since they have armor, they're harder to kill. Not a big fan of this unit itself. It's pretty awful. 
only four rifles, three submachine guns, so it doesn't do well at anything. The LMG is better than a Bren, I'll give it that. Now the center getting cracked here by Koenig. And Koenig's positive trading is finally starting to pay off here. Now this is the L shoots in Panzerfaust, which means he only has one MG42, but for 20 points, it's still a pretty good squad, all things considered. BF109 does get through. Has managed to land a nice shot on the kangaroo rifle. But the town's suddenly collapsing here. Back to 12-12, but I think that's pretty temporary. 20 mils are now double vet, but still can't get the job done. Once the pack 40 unpins, pins, excuse me, should be able to take out the Sherman, but the Vickers is right there. The second fire to shot's going to get repinned. Shoots and can't hold it off. Stug trying to stay out of range of the Staghound. He's going to get the first. Oh, no, he actually fell back. Interesting. Kangaroo just flying through. These units don't have AT. Elo shoots is not actually pinned, though, so he should be able to toss some grenades. Oh, he falls back instead. I think that might have been a mistake. Yeah, I think that might have been a big mistake there, because falling back actually puts you outside of the 50 cal minimum range again, which means now they can kill it. Shook three. Oh, no. What's it doing? Well, first off, it's hill pressing, which is bullcrap. What is it doing? Like, honestly, what was that bull? Never were specifically targeting the Firefly? Not a fan of that. What are the chances this Firefly is still going to be there after this aim time is done? I mean, even if it is, so you killed a Firefly, big whoop. Now the kangaroos. Yeah, and this is the thing with kangaroo rifles. is It's, it's the kangaroo. The kangaroo rifles themselves, while they are probably the best Commonwealth infantry unit, just, just by pure chunk and triple Bren, which is still not great, but it's still a triple LMG, and it's got a Piat, like, it just does everything. It's that kangaroo that comes along with it that makes these guys so annoying to deal with. Because now your response has to be twofold. It has to be both AT and HE. Is the Garlic going to get a free Firefly here? Shoop, there's one pen. It's going to take three pens, though, and the Garlic's being stupid. Fail. Total fail. And now the kangaroo flies in here. There's no AT whatsoever. These kangaroos are just grabbing everything. Yeah, and Luflon does kind of lack of... I mean, he even brought a whole bunch of Panther Shreks. He has a second card of Panther Shreks. We just haven't seen them. And I have to assume that was specifically for this. I kind of thought Fair would be, like, spamming Candor Shreks. That's the whole point of bringing a second card in. And I wasn't judging the second card choice. There's oftentimes I kind of wish I brought two cards of Candor Shreks. They die pretty easily. Usually get a kill and die. I don't want to call them a suicide squad, but they kind of are. Black's going to get surrendered, and then he's going to be really boned because he'll have no way of stopping these Typhoons. Piot actually misses. And I say actually because in the last several games I've watched, Piot's have been pretty on. They've been a little. They they felt a little less memey than they used to. It used to actually feel more like it was like twenty five percent accuracy. Now I actually feel it's a little more positive. Stewart is able to get by the Stug three. This one misses its shot on the kangaroo. The kangaroo might just finish off the Flak thirty six before he can kill it. Just barely survives. Sherman is still here though. And now here comes the rest of the armor to capture the flag. 1311. Amazing that Koenig only has a 1311, but that's also because Farad has made good progress up north, but he's trading poorly to do it. And that's oftentimes... That's a lot of times that's Farad's game style issue, is he, he trades... He poorly trades for flags. Um, this works really well with his aggressive play style because he doesn't really care in the first 20 minutes if he trades somewhat poorly. Again, you can't, like super badly trade where you just don't kill anything and everything yours dies. Obviously, that doesn't work. But, you know, if you're only slightly behind in trades, you know, say two or 300 points in trades, that's fine. Like, that's not the end of the world if you are super aggressive, you're picking up an early double tick, and you're just really plowing into your opponent. Um, especially on mere income or aggressive versus defensive income. Maverick balance, you know, so on and so forth. This motor rifle going to get a Piot kill here any second because Ferret is, I don't know what Ferret is doing. 
I'm not sure how he expected that to turn out. But anyway, so like that works really well when you're an aggressive player like Ferret and you're just, you know, constantly at some sort of aggressive flag lead. So you trade a little poorly to get those flags. It works. But when you're on the back foot like this and your flag drums even, I feel like Ferret has to be has to start playing a little bit more defensively instead of just plowing forward to try to get a flag. 31 minutes and 40 seconds here. 28, 35 to yeah, 18, 10. This this trade difference was too different, right? The deficit here was too great. Um, Farid trading too many points for flags, and it just did not work out. Fourth, fourth Canadian feeling really solid there. Feeling very solid. You just have a lot of units out. Like, you just have a lot of stuff out all the time. Nothing is, like, crushingly expensive. So you get a lot of things out. Well, that's a pretty common allied theme, I guess. 91st Luthflanda, though, is expensive, right? Your infantry are Fulcher Jaeger base, which means they're on the absolute upper crust of expensiveness in, in infantry. Um, your, your AT is a lot of pack 43s. Your AA is a lot of 88s. Your RD is Neville Ver for 300 mils. I mean, everything in your deck is very expensive. There's really nothing that's super cost efficient. Um, the LL shoots in are about the only thing that's like, quote unquote, cost efficient in the deck. So I feel like it's, it's a hard division to trade really well with. If you guys enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe, consider checking out the Patreon link down below and attackpowergaming.com. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.